Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we're at a project that you guys might recognize. This is the How to Build a Garage series. And um, this was a 30 by, I do believe, 48 garage that we built. But unfortunately, we're not here necessarily to do any glorious stuff. We're here to do rework because, as you can see, um, I'm not going to shout out names or it's not about ridicule. It's actually a great opportunity to kind of showcase why we love working with Versetta Stone. But you can see the black top was sprayed up against the stone. And obviously that is not acceptable. So we're here to replace it. And it is the middle of winter. So right away, that's one thing that you're not going to be able to do if this was a, a real stone. Uh, it's really hard to work in the winter with mortar and you know your traditional stone. This is not real stone. It's a fake cast concrete. And we're going to go ahead and take all this off and replace it and I'll kind of take you guys through that. Maybe I'll show you what the inside of this building looks like too, so stick around. It's winter and if this was all mortared on stone, obviously we'd have to start chipping it off and then we'd probably have to heat this whole area up in order to get our mortar to not freeze on us. The nice thing is this is a tongue and grooved stone product. It's actually cast in a factory. First off, 50 year warranty on the product, so that's pretty killer. The other thing is, you can run 80 square feet, I do believe it is, before you encounter a repetitious piece. Now you don't have to worry about you know, it looking like a fake product. This is not glued, so I know people were you know, curious about it. Yeah, there's a little bit of movement, and that's because there's a space behind here that automatically is put in the back of the stone with the strip, which I'll show you, which is gonna create a rain screen. So if any moisture makes its way behind this, uh, there's a gap for water to run out, but if I pick this piece up, look at that. It's going to be able to come out. Maybe we'll be able to use some of these. We'll see. Nice thing is we also use screws to put this together. So you guys are gonna see just how quickly we can get this whole thing taken down and hopefully put back up. So now that we've got our screws out, can see right here this flange, this metal flange that you screw through, it also sets the panel off the wall about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. And that's what's gonna give you that gap back behind here for your rain screen. Hopefully it's not into the blacktop too bad over here. Oh, nice. That was easy, that took about two minutes to unscrew, take all this off. That would have been a pain if it was real stone. Now we're ready to go ahead and start installing the new stuff. The big reason I love to use some nice felt paper, A, it's gonna give us that extra layer of protection, uh, but also what it does is hides the, the white in the background. So if you have any cracks or gaps in the stone, since it's not mortared or you don't come back and tuck point it, uh, the black kind of takes takes away that and gives it a nice shadow line. That's about right. Now the reason we do this reference line is so that every row we can check to make sure it's running perfectly level. Uh, and obviously we know that this is level because we came off of this trim and we know that was level. So why is it level? Because we're good. Because we shot it with a laser. Okay. So you can kind of see the, the ends of these are fairly finished. Uh, there's a gap and it's not perfect because they do make some specific uh, universal ends, corners that the, the whole end is like thickened and full. That way when you, when you stop it like on the wall, it looks finished from the end. These are just regular standard ones with the tongue and groove. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that tongue. That way it can go 
against this trim. Let's save this and mm -hmm. let's find one that has a thicker bottom so it covers as much of this as possible. Right in that spot. I think that was probably good, right? Let's check it. Yeah, it's a little rock right there. Yeah, it's probably good. I think we're gonna make that work, my dude. I think so. Oh, no. Let's see what we got. Here we're 19 and a quarter. Here we're 19 and th five, three sixteenths. So that side needs to go down a little. And honestly, this could probably come up. There you go. You did it. You did it. So now you can see why we love the reference line. Yeah, right there. Hold that. Hold that. And now we're both 19 and a quarter. When I'm installing this, I flush up this end and install the other end to the same dimension. that 19 and a quarter, I can assure that at least this stays good. You might be saying, well, why don't you just snap lines and run this flange to a snap line? You can't do that because the way this is manufactured, and who knows, maybe someday I'll get to show you guys how this is manufactured at the plant, but this flange is set into the cast concrete form by hand, uh, which means it's not always gonna be perfect. So you can't really go by this. You gotta just trust me on this. Go off of the top of this and you'll, you'll do a lot better in the end. Uh, we're here ready to cut this first piece and we're looking for ten and a half. Now cutting Versetta stone is not all that bad, but it does get a lot easier if you have some of the right tools. So this is the IQ Power Tools saw and I've had this for about a year now. Don't use it a lot. It's, I don't do a lot of masonry, so it's, it's really just used for the Versetta stone. But what's nice is that it, it does a really good job with dust, which nobody likes masonry dust. Yeah, it does a good job with dust collection. It does a decent job. It's a, a above average. So you might be saying, dude, that wasn't perfect. And no, it's not perfect. Once this saw gets into the material is when it does its best job. That first initial cut, there's gonna be a little bit of dust blowing until it really grabs suction, but it's pretty smooth, pretty powerful. So one thing you wanna make sure is that this groove is free of any debris. And sometimes just because of the casting, just take your hand, kind of clean that off because those will or can cause you issues as you're installing. But you can see that, that sucker just went in nice and tight. I'm just gonna verify, yep, we're good there. And the nice thing on this job in, in particular is that the piece I just cut, I'm gonna take it and it's right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use it to start off this row here. So that's a one nice feature. It also adds up to you know nice cost savings because you can usually utilize any piece, even just randomly if you wanted to throw a scrap into the middle of the wall. The way this uh, design is or the, the engineering behind the panel and the visual look of it, it does a really good job of hiding the panel itself. Things don't have to be perfect, perfect. I think sometimes the imperfectness of the stone is what really gives it its appeal. If it's too perfect, then it doesn't look like real stone because real stone is not perfect. So I like to use this reference line as just that, a reference. It's, it's not like the Bible. I don't have to live by it. I can use it to make sure that I'm staying, you know, within a 16th, 8th, something like that. 31, about 15, 16 So we've done three courses. You probably can't really see where they're at. Uh, if you were walking up to this job, you probably wouldn't even known it. Uh, but now that we're up four courses and we're out of scrap pieces to start, I'm gonna go ahead and use a full one again. And I'm gonna use that one that I was gonna use on the bottom. It's already got the side tongue off. 
and obviously you want to be you know thoughtful of your joints so you don't want too many joints lining up but we're we're up another four courses i don't think it's a big deal and you're never going to see it uh, and this is the same thing that we did initially when we built this building i'm gonna go ahead and install this and then we'll be after this row onto our rips you know one crazy fact that i learned about this product is that every stone is hand painted by an artisan so i, I mean i think that's what you would call them uh, they're in a factory and these things come out and they go across a factory floor, which once again, I'd love to see this because I think it's, you know, ridiculously crazy. But these are all painted by individual people, which really gives it uh, character and uniqueness. It's not a factory robot doing repetitious algorithmic painting details. It's like a person has to do every one, which means that is where the imperfections and the... Um, the kind of natural look is going to come from. I'm curious. Go ahead and drop me a comment down below if you guys would like to see how this thing is made, how this product is uh, manufactured. And maybe that's a whole nother series for the channel where we go around and kind of show you guys how things are made. I know I'm an uh, inquisitive guy and Greg likes to travel. So maybe uh, someone can get me and Greg to their factory and show how these products are made. So make sure you drop that comment down below. All right, one more cut here, mm, 10 and 11 sixteenths. Nice little tip for you guys, because this is not something I instantly thought of, but you learn over time, is that this piece is going to be 10 and 11 sixteenths. Now, you'll see we got this, this uh, you know, fake joint here. Luckily, it's going to be on this side, so we want this piece. So when this thing gets cut, imagine that is what it's going to look like. You don't want to make a cut with a little sliver of a piece. If there would have been a mortar joint right here, it would look goofy. Like who would naturally put a little piece of stone? So by doing this right here, it's going to look a lot more natural. So something to consider when trying to lay out your cuts, find pieces that work so that you don't have those little tiny rips. <laughs> So what I wanted to show you guys is that this material, it's made with like some colored aggregate. So what happens is when you install this, if you're going to showcase this side, it helps hide the fact that this is a finished edge. So also what that means is let's say uh, somebody knocks the corner of the stone after it's been installed, it chips it off a little bit. It's not going to be super noticeable. Once again, just another kind of little positive thing about this product is that they've kind of really done a good job. And I will say it keeps getting, it keeps getting better. Look at that. Boom. Perfect. Right where we wanted it. One thing that we have to do as post frame builders is use some different trim details. So as you can see, one thing we do is we run this J outside here up the edge and that gives us a nice termination for our stone. Also, this trim piece here that's all dirty because it's been out here in the, you know, living in the world for the last year and a half. Um, this trim detail is big enough to accept our stone, which means that this corner trim doesn't wrap over it nice and clean like typical. Like I said before, we had to do the plywood in the back. But other than that, like, that's it. I mean, this stuff is super easy. What I'm hoping to do here is uh, let's check out these pieces of stone that we had. We're gonna put this in just because we have it. And I don't even know if it's gonna fit. I think that's probably a little tighter than I want. So we're gonna go ahead and cut some new ones, which is okay. I just thought, man, if we could put these pieces in, they aren't damaged, there's nothing wrong with them. We'd be out of here, but lucky for you guys, unlucky for us, we're gonna have to cut the top ones. It's the worst part of the process because the IQ power tool saw does not rip, we have two options. We can either get a table saw out, or in this case, we've just got our uh, concrete saw. We've only got to rip down two and apart. We'll do that real quick. It's gonna create a lot of dust. I don't recommend it, uh, but there's really not a great solution that I know of. So definitely, once again, when you guys see us do this, if there's, a, if there's an easier way to do it, if you got a good solution, uh, 
drop it down below in the comments. Let's start ripping. So here we got the Milwaukee Fuel. This is the M18 cordless concrete saw. I don't recommend this, but in certain applications, it's the best we got. We're outside, we're just gonna blow this bad stuff away from us. And this thing cuts like butter, check it out. So we've got all these pieces cut. I got that first piece notched around this corner. And basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead, get this piece up here. And then I'm gonna take some OSI quad. And now this is not necessarily to make it uh, stay put, cause it can't go anywhere. I just wanna take some of that rattle out. So more or less just giving it some stiff backing, even though normally maybe I would take like I said, some metal and put it back here. Oh, this quad is cold. It's been sitting in the trailer. So what I'm gonna do is put some back here in the groove. That's gonna secure that. And then really I'm just gonna give it a fat bead. I know that the felt paper is not going to necessarily adhere. There we go. See, it's just to take away the potential rattle. And I'll shove some back here behind this. They have color matched sealants as well. So you don't have to have this clear caulk, but I don't have any. So we're gonna do this and hide it so nobody can see it. And let's hope that I don't have to take this off again because wherever this adheres to the stone, it will adhere quite well. Man, OSI quad in the cold. You gotta be careful because the pressure needed to get it out of the tube. I'm just waiting for it to blow back right, right into my hand or something out of the caulk gun. Let's see if we can sneak it up there. It's gonna be tight because there's a tongue here. See, look, plenty secure, super easy guys. I don't know what time it is. Small area, the bigger the area, the easier it is because you get just rocking and rolling. You can see how easy everything goes together. It's like a vinyl siding. Obviously cost is gonna vary, you know, depending on where you purchase it at. I, don't quote me on this, I wanna say they come in, they come in a pack of two, each pack, has six foot times eight inch. It's about, well, it's four square foot exactly. So $12.5 a square foot for the material. Um, every time I've gone up against a stone mason in my area, so once again, it's gonna be area specific, I am usually half the money installed than a good stone mason to do like a tight cut ledge stone like this. So take that for what you will. I think it looks great. That was actually a lot easier than I anticipated, not knowing what we were getting into with the black top down at the bottom, but I knew the install was gonna be easy. That's one of the great benefits of the Versetta Stone. So if you guys haven't seen it already, you know, it's probably available almost anywhere. Boral makes this stuff and it looks, I think, phenomenal. It works great for post frame, you know, due to the fact that we don't need any footers, any, you know, sort of really anything, just a nice solid surface behind that. So if you got a project coming up, maybe it's worth looking into. It's not as cheap as vinyl siding, or for us, it's not as cheap as putting steel up on the building, but it really just dresses it up and gives it a look, um, in my opinion, very close to a real stone look. It's got nice texture and 50 year warranty, kind of matched with our 45 year warranty on our steel, which is kind of crazy. 50 years, 45 years, but uh, I like it. Nice and solid, let's get out of here. That's another job taken care of. So I told you guys I'd get you a little bonus footage. This is the how to build a garage and we're inside. Uh, one of the cool things my client did is he did the epoxy floor. So that's giving him a really nice finish. He's got this killer hot rod 
that, um, you know, that was kind of the main reason for the shed, I think, was to store this, work on it, get it out of the personal garage. But I wanted to show you a couple things. And, you know, it's not for everybody, but surface mount conduit. We got the surface mount electrical box. This is what's so nice about post frame. We can come in without any utilities done, without any concrete poured. We can put up our entire structure. He did like a white wash on the three quarter plywood. So he's able to hang anything anywhere. As you can see, uh, his electrical box, he's got a nice um, Navian boiler here. So that is what is controlling his radiant heat in the floor. Honestly, it is super comfortable in here. There's never gonna be an issue with, you know, water staying on the floor. So it's gonna always, you know, do a really good job of evaporating. If you come in, like right now it's winter time, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys, this is a 30 by 4D, 8, 16, 24. Yeah, this is a 30 by 40 garage. And it's just perfect. I mean, who wouldn't want this? A nice place to come get away from, I don't know, stuff in the house, whatever you got going on and just hang out tinker with things. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like because I know that you don't get to see a lot of those finishes. Now up here in the attic, this was blown in with an R38. We got our scuttle hole in the back and that's really all that's used for. Once the insulation is done, that is it. Uh, this floor here, and I can kind of show you because, well, you guys already know we always shoot this base trim on with our laser. And then the concrete guy is able to use that as his guide where all the concrete is gonna go. You can see where the concrete is sloped out. I do like it when a nice pan is put here so that the door closes and then there's a ledge, no you know, wind-driven rain can make its way in. But they got some expansion around our trims, protecting them from any movement in the slab. But that's all this is. You know, this is a floating slab inside of our building. So it's not, it's not holding up our building. You know, the building is not um, relying on it for any structure because we've got it on those concrete piers. And this is just gonna kind of float into that expansion around the outside. And it's a perfect solution. It's a very cost effective solution. And I know a lot of you guys are always asking about, you know, can you build a house this way? You can, I wouldn't recommend it. I would always do, a nice full foundation wall with the floating slab on the inside like a traditional you know home or garage built on a slab so anyway uh yeah if you got any questions about this project or things that you want me to showcase the next time i go into a finished job go ahead and drop those down below in the comments make sure you hit that subscribe uh, if this is the kind of content that you enjoy and it also supports me and we'll see you guys on the next video i'm gonna get out of here